Hi, I'm Chris, and I hate eHarmony. I joined, like most of us do, because I was getting tired of the hit-and-miss dating approach. I thought my last girlfriend and I were compatible. She was quite attractive, tall, blonde, smart, we got along well, and spent lots of quality time together. But, as with any relationship with a non-functioning polyurethane doll, communication became a big problem, so I threw her out. I had a brief healing period, where I revisited lost friends and hobbies. Oh, I just got chainied. Anyway, eventually I was ready to get back into the market. By this time, my ex had already found a new guy on the internet, and they seemed to be getting along reasonably well together. Although I think that may have something to do with the fact that he has a six-figure ride and drives her around everywhere. This time, I wanted to get it right. eHarmony promises matches based on 29 dimensions of your personality, which has to be better than the two dimensions of a personality most of us guys initially look at. Now, I, of course, was referring to intelligence and sense of humor. So I signed up. I had high hopes because I think I'm a pretty decent guy. I play competitive tennis. I do stand-up comedy. I really enjoy playing basketball. But I'm not very good. So I went through the questionnaire. I was really happy when I saw height on the first screen. I'm 6'6", and one of my main goals is to find someone tall enough to look across at without them having to wear crazy stripper heels. But I'm also an atheist. So I should have realized that something was a little off with this site when the absolute first question about me was how religious I was and didn't give me an atheist option. But hang on, what does spiritual but not religious mean? Didn't a great philosopher once say that being spiritual but not religious is like believing in cheese but not cows? Well, actually, I dreamed that up a couple weeks ago. Anyway. It goes on to ask some questions that just seem bizarre. Number six, I often leave a mess in my room. Uh huh? I have a my apartment. I haven't had a my room since university. How old do they think we are? Indicate how well the words self-aware describe you. I didn't really know where they were going with this one, so I figured I'd look it up in the dictionary. Self-aware. Characterized by self-awareness. The fuck does that mean? Section 5, question 1. My personal religious beliefs are important to me. It was becoming increasingly evident that this website was created by right-wing evangelicals, especially when I read the first question in the next part, I like to look at people of the opposite sex. Look, if you want to find out if we're gay, you could try being a little more subtle about it. How about, I use conditioner, I cried in Brokeback Mountain, or I respect Celine Dion as a musician. Or, you know what, just come balls out and ask what you want to know. I am a homosexual abomination sent by Satan to destroy the sanctity of marriage. I have to say, though, that it's great to know that there are people out there other than my stepdad for whom knowing that my partner is usually to blame when things go wrong is very important. The true or false questions seem more to test whether or not you could read. I sometimes drive faster than the posted speed limit. I dislike some people. I sometimes waste time when I should be working. Well, I made this video when I should have been working because I strongly dislike the people at eHarmony. Oh, Ross from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania says, I found this to be the only service to ask what seem to be the meaningful questions that really matter. Ross, you're so dumb, I bet your first match was a tree. Now, I like the questionnaire, but why not ask questions that would actually be a barometer of your day-to-day -day living situation? For example, number one, define room temperature. Number two, how often do you want sex in a long-term relationship? Daily? Weekly? Monthly? Leap years? Number three, country music is bad music, terrible music, or not really music at all. Number four, which half of the bed do I get to sleep in? Left, right, bottom, or couch? At this point, I should explain a little bit about my story. When I first joined eHarmony, I got absolutely no matches in the entire world, confirming my suspicions that tall people die lonely, isolated deaths. But the next time when I was screen capturing my sign up for this video rant, I saw that I actually had some matches. Well, let's check them out. Karina, 5'3". Okay, uh, what part of I'm freakishly tall and height is very important to me do they not understand? It turns out that they created a new tab in their compatibility section called Nice to Haves and put height in it. It wasn't there before, and that's the only thing in there. Listen, eHarmony, anyone who's ever tried to park a half-ton truck in a downtown parkade knows that size matters. Now, before you get all tuned up about tall guys and big feet, let me explain. I like tall women and I just can't take short women seriously in a relationship for more than about four hours. Also, I used to do a lot of ballroom dancing, and if you're a tall guy in a dance competition, your partner has to be tall. 
And if you're both tall, people give you trophies, and lots of them. Anyway, back to my matches. Maybe Jamie will be tall. Oh, Tatiana, 5'7", Katie, 5'5", Jessica, 5'9". Almost there, but how can a 23-year-old work in law enforcement? Um, sir, I like pulled you over because you were totally speeding. Now, by this time, I'd actually given up on meeting anyone from this site, and I tried to find out where all this stuff came from. It turns out that eHarmony is the brainchild of a Dr. Neil Clark Warren, who is a clinical psychologist with a Master's in Divinity from Princeton Theological Seminary and a PhD in Clinical Psychology from the University of Chicago, which he got in 1967. He's also written a few books, one of which is called God Said It, Don't Sweat It, and has chapters like Quit Trying to Please People and Focus on Pleasing God Alone, Live Clean Innocent Lives, Practice the Art of Praising and Honoring Your Husband, and my personal favorite, Pray for Yourself and Christians Everywhere. Yeah, hey Buddhists, f*** you. You too, Muslims, what have you ever contributed to the world? Except for numbers in the scientific method. So I did some digging, and I only managed to find two video clips of Dr. Warren, the first of which was him on Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher, talking about sex and relationships. First off, I don't understand why we're taking sexual advice from a 73-year-old guy who believes we should live clean, innocent lives, and got his PhD two years before the moon landing, but here we are. If you get with somebody who's matched with you on what we call 29 dimensions, we got 29 dimensions that we think need to be matched for you to be with what these Gen Xers are calling their soulmates, that's real. I, I say that the most important thing in a marriage is to get to know who you are. Yeah, and then, right. number two, get to know what your must-haves are. Height. Height is a must-have. You've got to know what your must-haves mm -hmm. are in order to fight for them. Mm -hmm. And then get to know what your can't-stands are. Anyway, the second video I found is just idiotic. This is a promotional interview that I found on YouTube that Dr. Warren filmed with some pastor named Ruth Merriam and her hand puppet, Penny. I guess it's a TV show pilot or something. Anyway. Dr. Warren is ready to help, but Penny is no pushover. So, Dr. Warren, I thought that you could help the television audience with some problems. Now, first of all, why would you mic a sock puppet? There's an actual microphone, right there, clipped to the penguin's arm. It's not a Muppet. All right, well, let's see what Dr. Matchmaker says here. Penny ultimately worries about dying. Dr. Warren offers the comfort of his faith. I believe. I think heaven and that whole idea of life after death is a pretty remarkable, remarkably wonderful thing. I think I'd sooner get shot in the eye than watch this guy speak anymore. Oh, right, we did that. But none of this really explains my incredibly ill-suited matches. They're probably all nice people, but if you're not going to let us pick our matches, you'd better at least listen to what we want. I mean, I think I'm like most guys in my age bracket. I'm looking for a girl who's within a few years of 30, is able to look me in the eyes in a decent set of heels, and roughly matches my fitness level. Now, I realize that these people are few and far between, so I'm willing to meet women who live in any of the following provinces. Most countries are fine too, except the countries that don't make the height cutoff. And because I'd like to meet a girl, not buy a bride, that eliminates Russia, the Ukraine, and anything ending in Stan. And sorry, Francis Stan, but nobody likes armpit hair. So given these criteria, how could eHarmony screw up so badly and send me absolutely nobody on my first visit and only short people on my second? Dr. Warren, I await your answer. <laughs> 